What a cute little kitty cat. That's our mouse hunter. Night security. Everybody say hi to store night security. Okay. So when I put together that document, which was a budget for the new store, one of the things I said is if there's a budget shortfall, that Oreo will serve as security rather than having an alarm. So I figured we would get started training Oreo, but first having him kill the mice here. The new store? has way more mice than this one does. This one just started to get a mouse problem a few days ago, but I don't think we're going to have a mouse problem anymore. Something tells me that we're not going to have a mouse problem at 186 First Avenue anymore very soon. But he's going to be training here, and then once he's done training, he's going to have to take on all the mice at 141 West 27th, which has a serious mouse problem. That's the new store. And since we had a budget shortfall in arranging for the new store, we are also going to be training him to be the security alarm. So one thing many of you may not know about Oreo, at home, if I use remote desktop to remote into my home computer, the moment my cursor on the screen starts moving, he runs over to the couch and stares at that cursor and he meows every time it moves and he stays there until I log out. Once I log out and the monitor turns off, he'll go back to doing what he's doing. But Erica tells me for the entire time that I am remoted into my home computer, he stares at the screen intently and he stares at that cursor. He is an excellent security kitten. Something tells me Paul's not going to be able to get a lot of work done today. Yeah, my, my productivity is going to go down a little today. I, I can't kick him off my lap. Work with him on your... nervous in here, and now he's not. Now look at him. Work with him on your lap. I have to go get a computer. <laughs> A1466, no power. You would kick Oreo off your lap for an air, no power. No. Not the first day he's here. Paul, Maybe after he's been here a while. we need an additional $50,000, Paul. I need more cat love in my life. I don't have a cat at home. You have a turtle at home. Turtles don't love like cats. Do. Paul is trying to work with Oreo on his lap. This is going to be good. Who's a good kitty? Who's a good boy? He's a good boy. Who's a good little ESD safe kitty? He's my ESD safe kitty. Right. Let's cut open the PP3 v underscore G3 hot circuit and get to work. Let's cut that PP3 v up. Because we're not getting a green light. So let's take a look at how the PP342 underscore G3 hot circuit operates on here. Now, as many of you know, if you watch one of my first 600 to 1000 border pair videos, you need the one wire circuit to work in order to get a green light, and the one wire circuit is powered by PP342 underscore G3 hot. So this is the page where PP342 underscore G3 hot is going to be created, and PP3, well, why are you showing this crap for my architect on the screen? Go away. Go away. So over here, you've got the voltage that goes into the chip that makes PP342 underscore G3 hot, and that wasn't present. I had zero. Now that's going to come from either the battery or the charger. Battery or charger. Now the, for the charger power to go through, this transistor's got to open. This is, an N, uh, this is a P-channel MOSFET, which means it's going to open when the voltage in the gate is lower than the voltage on the source. So what you have here is you have a voltage divider between the gate and ground kind of formed by this diode and this resistor. But if this diode doesn't work, then this is always going to have the 18 volts of the source 
present on its gate because it's not going to be a path to ground to lower it, and then it's never going to work. So I'm kind of wondering if there was a little corrosion under there, if something managed to make its way under that underfilled area, and if that's why we're not getting anything on on input. So let's let's take a look at each each individual part of this. So if we go to the PDF, well, first things first, I need to just let's actually switch it over so it's easier for me to use. Let's go to Q7010. I want to see what's present on on uh, the the source. So that's going to be pin one of C7012 right here. The mouse doesn't show up in the right area because of Paul Daniel software, but we should be used to bugs like that right now. The mouse shows up in a different area in the software than it does in the screen. That is just the Paul Danielsism. So we have 17 on there, and then we look on the gate. And we have 17 on the gate. So that means that this diode is not doing its job. This diode is probably broken. The diode, see, if you look on the schematic, remember, for an end channel to open, the voltage in the source has to be higher than what's in the gate. What's on the gate needs to be lower than the source. So what R7010 does, and R7011, is it takes the voltage from the source and places it on the gate. Now, in order for the voltage in the gate to go down, we have to take some voltage from the gate and send it to ground, which is what the diode is supposed to be doing, but it's not, because it's... Now, that little diode over there that looks so cute, like an adorable little kitten, is not working. So we're gonna replace this diode with a superior diode. We're going to heat it up, cut it off the board. Now that diode is going to act as the bottom of a voltage divider. So a voltage divider is essentially two, usually just two resistors. One resistor between high voltage and where you want the middle voltage to go. And then another resistor between where you want the, the middle voltage to go and then ground. So it's, it's a very inefficient but super cheap way of lowering voltage in an area. Now obviously, you wouldn't use this to supply large amounts of current because it's ridiculously inefficient. As it's linear, it is on all the time. A, a voltage divider could technically be called a linear power supply. You know, while accurate, it's ridiculously inefficient as opposed to a switching power supply. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see that the diode is an Apple diode. How can you tell? Well, it's laughing at the user. See that? What does it say on it? And no, that does not stand for hydrogenaudio.org. If you look really closely, you can make out that the diode says, ha. Let's see if I can get that on screen. Ha! The diode is laughing at you, the customer, for buying this damn product that has no liquid resistance, unlike IBM laptops from as far as 15 years ago. The laptop is laughing at you. Now I've made, let's see if we are able to get a fan spin in this beautiful MacBook now that we have touched up the 5 volt and 3 volt power supply by U7501 and have fixed the issue with intermittent PP3v4 too. So even though this turned on in the beginning of the stream, you saw it stopped turning on for, uh, for me and how there was a lot of liquid in those areas. So now when I do this, I expect it to be a green light and also a fan spin with proper milliamp usage and that it is working, beautiful. So we had several problems with this. The first issue that we had was generalized corrosion. There was generalized corrosion that needed to be addressed and fixed in the PP3v4-2 area, we noticed that there was no green light in the charger. Now, remember, to get a green light in the charger, to get a green light, the one-wire circuit has to work. That's the circuit that allows the charger to speak to the system management controller. And in order for the system management controller and the one-wire circuit to power, these are two rails that are powered by PP3v4-2 underscore G3 hot. If PP3v4-2 underscore G3 hot is not present, those, power rail, those chips are not going to work. PP3v4-2 is not present because we were missing 17 volts on its input pin. And if you take a look over here, this is the input, 17 volts on VN. It wasn't present here. It wasn't present here. It wasn't present here. It wasn't present here. It was present here. 
So it means the transistor is not opening. Now either A, it's not being told to open, or B, it is broken. Now, first thing we've got to do before we just replace this because the power is here but not here. It must replace this. No, we think. Engage brains. This is a P-channel MOSFET, meaning the voltage in the gate, G, needs to be lower than the voltage in the source, S. We had 17 volts here and 17 volts here, so obviously there was a problem with it being told to open. Now, this is the path to lower the voltage in the gates. The first thing I'd look for is clearly this thing has to open, the gate has to be lower than the source, so there must be a path that they designed in here to get the voltage in the gate to be lower than the source. So we take a look through here, and you see that the voltage on the gate, the only path it has to go down to ground, because ground is going to be zero in this case, is D7012. So we're, that's the, it's either that or R7011. And R7011 is not going to be it. It's just the uh, intermediate path to ground. It's the diode. We replace the diode, and it works. The diode is one of those little glassy-looking diodes. A lot of those glassy-looking diodes, the problems with them, as well as the glassy-looking transistors, is that they're really easy to break. And that is evident here because it didn't even look broken, but it was. And it's going to trick you because even though that didn't have corrosion on it, it broke. Notice how the components that actually did have corrosion on them by the PP3V42 circuit were easily salvageable, whereas the diode that was right under all of that encapsulation was a thing that wasn't working. That's a trick that Apple's going to play on you, which is why the diode says ha on it, because Apple is laughing at you if you bought this product. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of what we do here. I hope you learned something. I hope you're able to take this stuff and uh, use it to fix a product, make some money for yourself, make somebody happy, and I'll see you in the next video.